quick. Think about all the things you need to get done today. Now think about all the things you need to get done tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and then next week. Now, answer this question. Are all of those things written down somewhere? If not, join the club, the Overworked and Under-Resourced Club. But that club is actually just a club that we made up to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. You see, when most people complain about the fact that they have too much work to do and too little time in which to do it, they are actually suffering from a lack of control and organization in their life. It is possible to have an overwhelming number of things to do and still feel in command of every situation you find yourself in. In getting things done, you'll learn two critical things. One, how to capture all of the things that you need to get done, both now and in the future. And two, how to discipline yourself around the inputs you allow into your life so that you can take the appropriate next actions to get those things done. You'll leave with a system to get control back over your life And that, my friends, is priceless. So buckle up and get ready to learn the five-step process to making it happen. Collect, process, organize, review, and do. Collect. The first step is to capture information on the things that you need to do. The goal here is to free your mind from holding on to the lower-level task of remembering what you need to do in the future. Just think about all the time you waste trying to keep the things you need to do on the forefront of your mind. When we go out and collect things, we need a place to put them. We'll call these buckets. We're looking to collect 100% of the things that are incomplete. The goal here is not to make decisions about whether or not we'll take action on them or when we'll do them, but rather put them somewhere so that we'll come back to them later. For instance, your email inbox is an example of a bucket that operates with you having to do anything. But what about the rest of the things in your life? Here are some of the other things that can function as a bucket for you. A physical inbox, notepads, electronic note-taking devices, a voice recorder, an email. There are a few factors that will determine the success of your collection efforts. First, Everything that is incomplete must be out of your mind and into one of the buckets. Second, you'll need to have as few collection buckets as possible. Pick the ones that you absolutely can't do without and then never put anything incomplete anywhere else. Third, you must empty them on a regular basis so that you deal with the items in a timely manner. For instance, I use email and a predetermined spot in my project management software exclusively as my inboxes. It's a struggle to only use those things exclusively at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be well on your way to peace of mind. Process. The next step in the equation is to process the information. Our goal in this step is to get the buckets down to zero. We won't necessarily do all the work right now, but we'll find a spot for all of the items. First, we'll ask a simple but important question. What is it? This may seem incredibly simple, but taking a second to understand what the item is will greatly clarify what you can or should do with it. Second, we'll determine whether or not it's an actionable item. If you answered no, there are three possible choices. It could be trash and no longer needed. If so, get rid of it. It could be that no action is needed now, but that it might need action in the future. If so, Incubate it in a tickler system that will tell you when you need to look at it again. It could also be potentially useful information in the future, but you aren't sure if you'll need it. If so, put it in a reference pile that you can access later. If you answered yes, two things need to be determined. First, what project or outcome have you committed to? If it's related to a project, you should have an open project list where you can place the item More on this in the organization section. For instance, if you're planning a retirement party and you just got a call back from one of the catering companies you're getting a quote from, you'd put that information into the project bucket. Second, we need to determine what the next action is. For instance, the next action for the retirement party might be show quote to Bob 
and get his approval. Third, we'll decide what to do with that action. Once you've decided on the next action, we have three choices. First, you can do it. The general rule is that it's going to take less than two minutes to accomplish and we can act on it now. We'll just go ahead and do it now. Second, we can delegate it. And third, we could defer it. If it's something that can't be done now or for it'll take longer than two minutes to complete, put it into your tickler system so that your attention is brought back to it at the appropriate time. More on this in the next section. Organize. In order to create the next steps and put everything into the appropriate buckets, you'll need a system of organization. For non-action items, you can trash them, incubate them in a tickler system, or put them into a reference file. You should have separate buckets for each of these. For actionable items, things get a little more detailed. For this, you'll need a list of projects, storage area for project plans and materials, a calendar, a list of reminders of next actions, and a list of reminders of things that you are waiting for. How you structure these lists is up to you. You could use a software program. In fact, there are many options available that were built specifically using the getting things done methodology. You could also use a paper-based system like a leather-bound planner. The key is to find something you enjoy using and that works well for you. Projects. You'll be surprised to find out that Allen defines a project as anything that requires more than one step to complete. So, it's likely that you're now the proud owner of many more projects than you previously thought you had. These projects will range from writing a new book to cleaning up the garage and everything in between. Allen makes a great point about projects. You can't do a project. You can only do one action after another. So, we need to start getting specific about what happens next. Next actions. As we discussed earlier, anything less than two minutes you'll just do right now, and anything you delegate will go into a tickler system reminding you to follow up. However, if you have a next action item that falls outside of that, we'll need to find a spot for it. One of the places we can put the next action is on your calendar. This is an appropriate spot when the next action needs to be done at a specific day and time, like an appointment, or even if it needs to be done on a specific day, perhaps shopping for a birthday present. You also might want to put day-specific information there, such as directions to your appointments or birthday reminders. What else should go in your calendar? Absolutely nothing. This might run counter to the other stuff you've been taught along the way, but only the things that truly have to get done in a certain day should be put on your calendar. All the other next actions should be put on a list that you can refer to. If you have multiple projects and a lot of next actions to keep track of, they should go into separate lists so you don't get overwhelmed. Review. Now that you've got your system in place, you need to consistently review it in order for it to be effective. So, what should you review, and when should you review it? Things to review daily. The thing that you'll want to check most often, at least once per day, is your calendar. It will have the complete list of all the things that you absolutely must get done in a day and set your mind for the type of day you will have. The next thing you'll want to do is turn your attention to the next action lists. This is where you'll find the set of actions that must be completed if and when you have discretionary time during the day. Lastly, the projects, waiting for, and other lists should be reviewed only as often as it takes for you not to worry or think about them. Things to review weekly. If you're like most people, by the time the week is over, there's a huge gap in what you thought would happen and what actually happened. No matter how good you are at getting things done, you'll never rid yourself of this reality. To deal with this, the one thing you need to build into your weekly schedule, put this in your calendar, is a weekly review session. All of your lists, including the ones above, should be reviewed at least once per week and at the same time. This will allow you to make sure you have your calendar in order for the week to come, 
and that you've cleared all of your potential to-do items out of your head and got them into the system. This will only work well if your review is systematic and complete. If it's not, like not checking different lists that you have, for instance, your review will be incomplete and things will fall through the cracks. If you do your review session properly, it will feel a lot like the week before you go on vacation. You make sure that every loose end is cleared up and renegotiate any agreements that can't get completed by the time that you leave. Like Alan suggests, instead of doing this yearly, you should make it part of your weekly routine. Do. As you're working through the next actions list and you're deciding what you should do next, think about the four criteria to make your choice in the following order. One, context. Two, time available. Three, energy available. And four, priority. Context. Context is important because there are certain tasks that can only get done in certain circumstances. For instance, if you're stuck somewhere that for some reason you can't connect to the internet, like 35,000 feet in the sky and not on Virgin America, you'll need to do work without it. By tagging your next actions with context-specific information, you'll be able to pull up a list of things that you can do in that situation. Time available. Some to-do items in your next action list will take 10 minutes, and some will take longer than an hour to complete. This becomes important when you find yourself let out of a meeting 20 minutes early or if your plane is delayed for 30 minutes at the airport. Understanding what tasks you can complete in the amount of time that you have available will make it much more likely that you'll tackle one of them. Energy available. It's a proven fact that your energy waxes and wanes throughout the day. Tasks that require a lot of mental focus will only be possible when you have a high amount of energy. For instance, I find that the time when I have the most energy is right after I go to the gym at lunchtime. So that's when I tackle items from my list that require my mind to be at its sharpest. Other times, nearing the end of the day, my energy is at the lowest, so that's when I tackle items that require less energy and focus, like clearing my inboxes. Understand when you have the most energy and pick items from your lists accordingly. You'll get much more done. Finally, priority. Now, and only now, should you be looking at priority. Of course, nobody's suggesting that you ignore emergency situations that require you to ignore this advice and go put out the proverbial fire. But when you truly have control over what you do, this is the approach you should take. In conclusion, there you have it. Everything you need in order to get started with your very own system to getting more done in your day and lowering your stress levels as much as humanly possible. I wish you the best of luck. Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!